So that quick little transition that only took you about two or three seconds to watch actually took me over an hour to edit. To keyframe the size and the position of the shape mask frame by frame, and then to keyframe the scale of each clip frame by frame is just an absolute nightmare. And of course, only after putting in all of that time and effort, I find out that there's actually an easier way to do this effect, like a much easier way. And this is what it looks like. So right here in my timeline, I've got my two clips that I'll be working with, pretty basic stuff. And to do our mask zoom effect, I'm going to take this transition here, drop it between my two shots, and adjust the length to how long I want the transition to last. Now with my playhead in the middle of the transition, I'm going to start drawing a mask in the desired area, in this case, the center of the grip tape roll. After some tweaking, I'll head over to the control panel where I will adjust the softness of the mask as well as the fade in speed and that's literally it our transition is done now the sponsor of today's tutorial and the company that makes this drag and drop transition is Pixel Film Studios. But today for our mask zoom effect, we will be using their TransZoom mask plugin. And the first 500 people to use the code PIXELSHIFFER1 will get an additional 30% off. As you just saw a few seconds ago, the TransZoom mask plugin creates a zoom animation automatically and there's no keyframing necessary. Not to mention I actually prefer the look of the end result using this method over the manual version that also just takes two long. But to show you a little more in depth how to actually use this plugin, let's take a look at a classic effect that we've all seen, like the popular eye zoom transition. Epic. So we begin with two very basic clips here, and I've already trimmed them down to my desired length for this example. In our transitions window, I'll find the Pixel Film Studios TransZoom Mask plugin, and unlike the previous example where I used the Zoom Out preset, this time I'll be using the Zoom In preset. Drag and drop the preset between your two clips and adjust it to your desired length. If we scrub through this frame by frame, you can see it's automatically created our Zoom In transition, but it doesn't yet have that seamless look that we're going for. So to start drawing our mask, I want to find a frame where I can see the whole pupil. So as I scrub through here, I think this frame should work. And all I'm going to do here is click directly on our footage to create a point. But before I let go, I'm going to drag just a little bit to create these handles, giving our mask a nice curve. But I'll go ahead and make my next point over here, also clicking and dragging to get that nice curve. And if you like, you could always start with a more rigid shape and add these curves afterward by simply holding shift and clicking on the points you've already made. Now, after some minor tweaks, we'll go up to our inspector window and we can adjust the softness of the mask and the softness radius. Now, I personally like to have a really seamless looking mask, so I'll crank up the softness all the way. And for our softness radius, I'm just going to bump that up to two. Now, if we scrub through our footage, again, you can see that our mask is looking good, but we aren't quite zooming into it the way we want. Now to fix this, all we have to do is go into the inspector window and enable the edit mode in which we can start repositioning our anchor points, and this will determine where in the frame our zoom is going to occur. So I'll just grab the green anchor here, which is for our first clip, and I'll drag that around until we've got the pupil centered in the frame. And once I'm happy with that, I'll grab the red anchor point and position that so that the truck is in the center of the eye, because that's going to be the focal point of our next clip. Once that's done, we'll turn off the edit mode and we can play back our transition, and that's looking a lot better. Now the transition is done and you could leave it like this, but there's a whole bunch of other options we can explore to take this to the next level. In this little drop down menu here, we can add a rotation to our zoom. In this case, let's try out a one half rotation clockwise. Now I wanna make my transition fade in a little bit more gradually, so I'll go ahead and adjust the fade in speed. And we can finish off this transition by adding a bit of flash, a whole bunch of blurring, and an RGB split to tie it all together. Now all there's left to do is add a little bit of sound design and here here is the final clip. But that is it for today's Final Cut tutorial. I hope this can help you save some valuable time when editing. I've actually got another tutorial coming out fairly soon that I think you guys are going to like, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys then.